silence. Do you hear that? Violence, boom! But we mustn't talk about it, because that's taboo. I must remain silent. The media talks of the shadow of a stranger that jumps from the bushes as he pushes himself onto her. But it's far too scary to comprehend that somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend or someone we love could hurt them. But why didn't you desert them? Why didn't you leave and run? How on earth did you become trapped with this vicious person? What were you wearing? How were you daring to walk alone at that time of day or night and not expect to fight for the right not to be violated? You shouldn't drink because I shudder to think how you'd suffer because no means yes when you're ten shots under. Oh great, here we go. Another woman who is angry. So let's pretend that what she's saying isn't the reality of what your mother or your sister is praying won't happen every time they cover their drink at a party. Silence! It is our responsibility to save ourselves, but his blame is shelved right at the top. You should have left. You must be blind and deaf to love someone who could break you down, push you around, punch and hit and... and... that R word. I am the one in three who now constantly clutches their keys as I walk to my door at dusk. I must save myself because he will get off. While I am lost in a sea of judgement and misinformation, spread by a nation who punishes victims instead of perpetrators, naive and nasty deprecators who silence me, the one in three. But that's fine. Pretend it's not there. And when your daughter is 12 and riding her bike on a paper route, a van will mount the gutter as catcallers spit and stutter and shout slut to your little girl. We don't want to listen because it's too disturbing. And how can we change a problem ingrained into society's fabric? This pain is a fucking labyrinth of laws that need changing, of politicians who need educating, telling men and women ranging from five to a hundred that a dialogue needs to be started. Silence, boom! Do you hear that?